I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like thinking, hey, nobody's born a good parent. Right. You learn. You learn. It's a learning thing. And I just yeah. used to hate when they and they criticize each other. I just hate hearing that. Look, that's their child. That's their child. That's not your child. They're doing what they think is in the best interest of their child. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know. Sometimes we look at other people. We say, "Well, I wouldn't do that." You know, we we look at what other people are doing, but it's not your child. See, and yeah. you, only you know the lens you'll go to with with your child. Nobody can tell you what lens they say you can only go so far with your you. That's not your child, mm -hmm. right? And I've gone through lens with each of my children that maybe somebody on the outside would say, "Well, you shouldn't," you know. It's not your child. <laughs> it's not your child. It's my child. So I'm going to go through whatever lens I think I need to go through with them. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> oh. It's, 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 it's just a learning that, that, to I mean, they write books on it. They're helpful at times. You can learn mm -hmm. something from them. But there's no manual on children. Raised from the grave, time to wake up. Active in my faith, time to stay up. Watch me flip the switch like this. Watch me flip the switch like this. Raised from the grave, time to wake up. Active in my faith, time to stay up. Watch me flip the switch like this. Watch me flip the switch like this. Okay, okay. Alright, so look. So, fun fact. Uh, you know how you you just got in the car, you turned it on, the music was blasting. Mm -hmm. When I used to, before I ever had a car and I had my license, I used to drive my parents' van. And there'd be uh, almost every time when I would be by myself, I'd have the music blasting. I had to make sure I turned it back down and back, and if it was a radio station, I had to turn it back to the radio station that my dad <laughs> and my mom and them would listen to. <laughs> and make sure I turn the back down when I pull back into the driveway so that way when they got in the car it wouldn't be no uh, potential issues you know I, <laughs> so I, what were you listening to just, just radio uh, if I if I didn't have my own uh, music you know if I uh, maybe uh, if it was the radio then you know I'd probably be listening to 102.3 or uh, it just kind of depended on the mood that I was in, though, too. So, like, sometimes I would listen to the fish, but then other times I'm not listening to the fish. <laughs> and, you know, uh, listen to so, stuff that y'all don't necessarily agree with. What's so funny is I used to, uh, when I worked for the school, I used to pick up kids in the morning in the school car. So, like, we had a company car that we used to go pick up kids in and have a radio. Okay, and I, I used to take them to the too. school. I thought you used to drive, uh, drive a van. I mean, yeah, but I mean, it was the it, it belonged to the school though. Oh, uh, so it was an actual van. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I used to I used to blast it with the kids, so <laughs> <laughs> I used to get there. Um, you know, I I was always I had to remember to turn it down when I got into the parking lot because if I forgot, then immediately like my boss would get inside the van. And she'd be like, what you got these kids listening to? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> She's the <to> kid upset. <laughs> oh, man. I, they funny. used to like the music, though. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, it's, man. That, it's that's funny because when your brother drives the car, the first thing I do when I get in, because, you know, he always put it on auxiliary, right? And yeah. He, he to his, through his phone and stuff. I gotta uh -huh. make sure where the volume is. I always check the volume. <laughs> and I know he's been using it. And sometimes he got it up to like 25 or 30. And if you just, if I just plug in my station to fish, it'd be blasted. So always, always, yeah. after he drives, I always gotta check the volume first. <laughs> yeah, my dad, he don't, he, like, my mom used to blast music when we was younger. So I, I feel like that's where my feeling of, aside from the feeling, uh, aside from my, my, my liking to, to, to rap and hip hop, my mom, I think that was kind of the, the, the thing that kind of like, oh, I like, you know, I like music that blasts, you know what I'm saying? But it's funny when I got like older, 
it was like she had like music blasters. I was like, wait, like <laughs> you used to blast music all the time. What you mean? So you know, it, it, it's fun and funny. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a good fun fact right there. <laughs> so welcome to the Flip the Switch podcast. Where we flip the switch on everything from oh, everything. motherhood, motherhood. We talk about it all, relationships. This is a very special, very, very, very special episode. Um, definitely for me. And this one is definitely even more so in a way personal. Uh, because we have my father, the, the man that raised me, that, you know, uh, dad, forgive me for this one, but I came from his loins. Uh, the you man know, who my, made Mark Augustus. He made the man. I mean, like <laughs> the man that God, that, that, the man that allowed God to use him. To, to 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 make this man right here and uh my twin my twin you know what I'm saying my father my father I love I love my father my father Ray Roberson dad how are you welcome to the podcast I am blessed this morning I am doing well That's in spite of everything that's going on I am doing well yes, now, I see sir. you got your granddaughter in the background I like yeah that. I like that I see that I, I got my baby back there <laughs> oh yeah Maybe we'll oh, yeah. get into it. Why? Why? Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe we'll get into it. Uh, hey, you know it's interesting too. I just realized, like when this when this episode drops, it'll actually be uh, Father's Day weekend. I didn't I didn't realize that until just now, but it'll be Father's perfect. Day weekend when this actually airs. Perfect. So this is That's like perfect. the perfect episode for you know what I'm saying uh shout out to our last father that came on Mike Mike Darnell aka Mike Smith um he did a phenomenal job with with just delivering so much uh wisdom gold. yeah, yeah man, wisdom. Lot, man. It, it was it was like yo like I haven't been back just yet well by the time this airs it I'll have listened to it uh all the way through but man just like the man was saying some stuff now, I'm also bringing that up, too, because my father is um, is truly a man of God. I know, like, you know, people say that, you know, about people, and it's not always the case. Uh, in my case, it is. Like, legitimately, uh, he not only reads the Bible, he studies it. Um, he gets his wisdom from there. Um, that's why you see gray hairs on his face, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 but but <laughs> I thought it was from kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be from that too. You know, I was definitely not exactly um, uh, the best child per se growing up. I mean, I wasn't like a terrible child. Just you know, gave my parents a hard time. So you know, it, it could I could bet I probably gave a couple of gray hairs and you know in there. But you know, the rest of it comes from wisdom. <laughs> so you know. Um, but but uh, seriously, um, my dad like he he has so much wisdom and knowledge in him. Uh, like I I kind of feel in a way, um, he and Mike Smith are similar in the sense of conversation. Like when you just talk to him, man, it, it's it's that's like literally one of my favorite things to do with my dad. Like I I'll sit there and just talk to him. We'll talk for hours, and we'll talk even to the point like he works graveyard shift. Well, he used to work graveyard shift. And um, so back when I was living with him and he was working graveyard shift, uh, he would come home and he's usually not tired. Like, well, he's tired, but he's usually not like ready to go to sleep yet when he first gets home. So he'll go home, you know, uh, start eating breakfast and stuff, whatever, get into his word, whatever. And sometimes we'll get into a conversation. And that conversation will last for like two, three hours or wow. until he, until I literally see him falling asleep on me. Like, he'll start dozing. I was like, okay, you need to let your dad go to sleep. Like, your dad needs to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, but I appreciate all of those conversations, um, whether they've been about the Bible, real life, um, you know, man stuff. You know, I've been, there, I've, I've, like, since I've been in my adulthood, I've probably confessed a few things to my dad that, you know, back when I was a teenager, I was not willing to do. You know what I mean? I was not willing to, to speak up on. Um, that's a beautiful but, thing. I mean, yeah, but I, I bring that up because, you know, some people don't have fathers uh, that they feel comfortable with talking to, even in, in, in their adult years. 
And mm-hmm. um, I have a father that I can do that. You know what I mean? I can, I, I mean, I've told my dad some stuff that, you know, I was like, he probably going to look at me like, you know, a little crazy for this one if I tell him this. <laughs> but uh, he didn't look at me like that. He didn't judge me and he didn't condemn me for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I feel like, you know, maybe afterwards he probably went and prayed about it. Um, and and so, you know, I just want to say, you know, happy Father's Day to my, my dad. Uh, you know, and I appreciate you so much, you know, for being the father and grandfather that you are. Uh, my kids uh, love, like, love my dad. And my oldest especially, like, he'll look. And if my dad is not exactly giving him attention right away, he kind of, like, gets an attitude, like, uh, Papa, come on. Like, I'm right here. And so, <laughs> you know, you got to be like, Dad, like, uh, your grandson, he 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 wants your attention. So uh, I appreciate that so much. Um, yeah, so, so listen, um, we we uh wait this is going to sound real bad right now but that's cool though we just going to just gloss over it uh there's no highlight for the week so we just going we going to highlight my father yeah that's what we do yeah we highlight <laughs> <laughs> no nah, I, I mean normally like we kind of have a, a, a we kind of flow a little differently sometimes and uh i i was like Oh, we did not discuss that part. So, uh, but yeah, I'm highlighting my dad though. I'm yeah. just shout out my dad, you know, for for being such an amazing father. Uh, he he. Uh, wait, no, are you are you still the head deacon at your church? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's the head deacon at, at his. Church. How many years have you been head deacon? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I am not sure. It's been wow. a long time. I've been at the church for for. Uh, this is my forty-first year at the church, though. Wow! Yeah. Wow. You want to talk about loyalty and faithfulness, man? <laughs> I'm still trying to get there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you you were head deacon when I was in high school, right? Uh, yeah. Joe, you, you, your mom might know exactly what year. Uh, I don't know. She probably does. Like, I really she don't got- know. <laughs> Keep me knowing all the you know, details. I, I can't even tell you even what year I became a deacon. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. He was born a deacon. <laughs> hey, this is another fun fact, bro. This is another fun fact. My godfather, um, he uh he calls my dad a bootleg pre- uh, preacher. <laughs> why? Why? Because the man can preach. No, no, because he can preach. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, like he can legitimately give you the word of God from the pulpit. Mm-hmm. Just as good as any pastor, uh, you know, uh, I ain't going I ain't going to do that today. I like my dad knows like sometimes I I'll, th- I'll throw shade in in our conversations. I throw shade at yeah. No, nah, I'm gonna say it. I'm that's whatever. It's my show. I don't care. Uh my dad can probably outpreach some of these preachers that claim to be preachers and pastors and all that stuff. Like my dad is no, like legitimately no legitimately <laughs> no sound in the word. I don't know like, about that. I, uh, see now he gonna be modest and say stuff like that. And that's fine. I'm with that. He's he's humble. It's cool. I ain't tripping. But I'ma tell you, my dad can preach like if people have heard me preach and feel like I can preach, I'm telling you, like half of that, at least half of that comes from my dad. <laughs> just conversations we've had, study times we've had together, uh, devotionals. Uh, so, I mean, just like anything you could think of that is uh, in regards to studying the Word of God. We've spent time together doing that together. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, if, if you feel like I'm good at it, then you need to look at my dad, man, because my dad is uh, so uh, solid. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'm any gifted speaker or got great oratory skills or like nothing like that. But the the uh, pastor I came up under and, and his wife, uh, because I got saved when I was in high school. And so okay. nice. I didn't they, know that. Were, they nice. were big on developing youth and all that. And so they just gave me some tools and I just learned how to use them. And so that's, oh, that's what good. I, so if anybody thinks I'm a great, I, I just took the tools they gave me and learned how to use them. Nice. And then greatness came out. So you're great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
Oh yeah, yeah. And so I have to, I have to really thank the late Dr. Mac Trimble and First Lady Ruth Trimble for that. And 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 our kids grew up under that, right? Mm-hmm. And so I thank God for the foundation that they've given not only me and my wife, but but our entire family. So I, I appreciate them. I'm, I'm forever grateful to them for that. Yeah, because I, I will say, like, there are things that, like, I've uh, come to realize after the fact, like, just in hindsight and things like that. It's like, you know, you can kind of be doing things in life and then something kind of triggers, you know, what you were taught. And it's like, oh, that's what they meant. Oh, okay. I, okay, I'm with that now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, you didn't understand back then because sometimes in life, you know what I mean? Like, you teach your children or you teach, you know, people that's up under you, you know, things that, uh, Truthfully, they just won't get until later on in life. Yeah. So you know what I mean, and and it and it, I got a lot of that. You know what I mean, where I started realizing, like, yo, like, oh, that's what he was saying. Oh, okay, like I see it clear now. You know what I'm saying, or I see it clearly now. So, anyways, um, we do random opinion of the week, as my dad mm-hmm. knows, and he already knows it's on him. So let's get into that. Let's have some fun. Um, like I told you, Dad, Jay is, you know, he be ready to argue. I, I don't know why he is like this. I, want, I need to meet your mom and we can have that conversation and figure out why is Jay like this? Because he, I don't know, he be starting up trouble. <laughs> but so, Dad, what, what is your, uh, you know, what is your opinion, whatever it may be? You, 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 you're all aware of what's been going on in the news lately about mm-hmm. the, uh, defunding the police department. What's your take on that? I think that's a good idea. Oh, interesting. Oh. Idea. He just flipped it on us. Uh, I like that. That's funny because I was actually thinking about that yesterday. Um, I, you know, I've, I've had an interesting relationship with um, with police. Uh, I was just talking to my mom on the phone uh, a few nights ago, and, you know, we were talking about everything that was going on, and she was telling me how when I was younger, um, I used to express to her how I didn't like uh, the police. And she used to always tell wow. me, well, you know, if you, can't, if you can't defeat them from the outside, you know, you got to go inside and do something mm-hmm. about it. And she used to always tell me that. So I used, I, I've always thought now, well, now since yesterday, I was thinking like, you know, I know that most of us, I've never really felt comfortable around a police officer. I had a conversation one time with a, a white person who told me that they actually feel a sigh of relief whenever they see a police officer. It was the first time I ever heard that a day in my life because I've never felt a sigh of relief <laughs> when I see one. Um, and I was wondering like, but I do think that there are moments where they do make some environment safer. So I, I don't know what the world would look like without <laughs> any policing at all. You know, mm-hmm. the only thing I, I agree with is that I don't think that their culture was founded upon the right principles. I think that their culture was founded upon going against black people, you know? So I, it's hard for me to make a decision in that, that bracket. So yeah, I'm kind of indifferent on that. That that's a that's an interesting um thing. That I mean, one I never thought about where the the origins of police policing came from. So that's something I'm gonna have to go back and look up. So I'm glad you brought that up because um, I, I feel like things get started, like things have origins that are sometimes they're pure. And then along the way, they get perverted. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like they get, you know, they get misconstrued. Um, so I, I've never, I never knew, I've never heard anybody educate any of us, you know, anybody on the origins of police. See, what um, I've always heard was that they began to catch slaves. That that was their original Oh, job so is that where the, the, the police thing was? Is, was that? Mr. Robinson might know more than us, but, you know. That's, that was, that's, that's what I've heard, too. Yeah. Okay. 
See, I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, but as far as the defunding, I, I, so I, I guess in a way, um, I'm probably indifferent on that. Um, but at the same time, um, I feel like it may not necessarily need to be a defunding thing. Like, I don't feel like it's necessarily like a defunding issue. I think what it is is that they won't do what is necessary to get the people that are in there out and then allow mm -hmm. the ones that, you know what I'm saying, that we, you know, people may consider to be good cops, you know, to stay in. Now, the issue with that for me is uh, I, I heard somebody saying that there's no such thing as good cops. Um, and I, if I'm, if I remember correctly, the point was basically because if they're silent, they're not any better than the ones that, you know, are yeah. actually doing what they're doing. So, you know, uh, my thing is, and, and I agree with that. Like if you're, if you know, um, like, okay. Like I saw this video uh, last night of this black female police officer and she didn't, she wasn't trying to stop the police. I know like, what we're talking together, about. But she mm -hmm. was like backing them up, like, no, like, we're not doing this. Right. And I appreciate that because it was her doing her job and still at the same time saying, no, we, like, she wasn't remaining silent on the, the, the injustice. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That was happening or that, that that they were attempting to to perform. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so police officers like her, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, it's, it wouldn't necessarily be fair if you have some, you know, some police officers that are not remaining silent on the issue. Um, because then it's like, yo, they got to, you know, go out and do another, you know, now they got to go find another job and stuff like that. Um, I don't think it would be necessarily that difficult for them to, but um, you know, it, it, cause then my thing is if, if the police, if police across the world gets defunded, then what's supposed to come in and replace that? And if there's something that that's going to be worse, then I would, you know what I'm saying? Like now I know people might listen to this and say, well, how could it get worse? Honestly, I don't know what worse looks like, <laughs> but I mean, if there is a worse, I don't want worse. I'd rather, hey, get all these people that, you know, be killing and get them out, put them in jail and in prison. You know what I'm saying? Y'all put a black man in in prison for stealing, you know, maybe a, a, a cupcake from the from the store for for years, but you won't put a man that killed somebody, regardless of their skin color, you won't put a police officer in jail or in prison for and murder? that's why most people are saying it's a cultural foundational issue and not an individual cop issue. Like the whole thing needs to be torn down and rebuilt. So oh, rebuilt. Okay. Yeah. But, so how do you feel, Mr. Robinson? Uh, yeah, what's, what's your... Well, I, the whole defunding thing, I know the mayor said, talked about it. I think in the, I, th I really think it's an appeasement thing just to mm -hmm. appease people. Yeah. Because that type of thing would take, it, it's not an overnight thing you can do. I mean, it sounds yeah, good right. coming out your mouth, but it's not something that's going to take place tomorrow. That would, ha that would take a process to do, to do that. And then like some of the celebrities I've heard were talking about defunding and replacing them with other people that can do that. But who are you going to replace them with? Yeah. Right. And who and how are you going to ensure that they won't act like them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> place them. I mean, Absolutely. so it's like you, people are talking. I hear people talking. Things they sound good, but what's the reality of it's going to be? And I think and another thing that nobody's talking about. Racism is still deep in this country. Actually, mm -hmm. all Absolutely. over the world. Absolutely. And nobody's talking. See, you can pass all these laws you want, but they don't necessarily change the heart of a man. And then right. unless the heart of a man is changed, 
all we could gonna do is mask racism and discrimination. It's just mask. You can pass all the laws you want. If you don't change their core being, and only God can do that, you're only masking the problem. And it's gonna flare up. I mean, because how long has this been going on? Mm -hmm. look, what, well, look what happened with Rodney King. Way back then, we, we protested it, and it's still happening. You've got to change the heart of a man, which nobody's talking about, if you're going to really deal with racism and discrimination. And like I said, you can make all the laws you want, all the changes you want on paper. It doesn't necessarily affect the heart of a man. So that's, my, that's what I'm looking at. You know, that's the thing I'm looking at. And it's probably going to be here, although maybe mask, you know. Is is there, do you think, Mr. Robinson, if there's a way um, for it to, like, if, if there is a way through legislation um, that we can actually at least be equal as far as citizenship is concerned, like, we can at least be treated equal as citizens, even though we, I know forever there's going to be white people that, that hate black people. Like, I, I know that's probably not going to change, you know what I mean, overall. There's always mm -hmm. going to be some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think there's some legislation that can be enacted that will give us some more equal footing. I do believe that. But to totally think we're going to eradicate racism, I don't see that happening in discrimination. Yeah. But I think yeah. there's legislation that can that can give us a more equal footing in in the eyes of people. I, yeah, because I, 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 I hope think they do something like that. Because I think most of us is but, like you but know again that that will be a process. Mm -hmm. Because how quickly are they going to come up with these changes, and how quickly are they going to be enacted? Well, I'll take reparations if they do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be I'd be willing to take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's for real. You, you definitely got plenty of people that would that would definitely take that for sure. Yeah, I'm not saying like you know that I would stop speaking out about it because of it, but you know, right. you want to give it to me? Yeah, I'll take it. I ain't gonna say no. <laughs> so, the, but I think I think the protests have really opened the eyes of people. I mean, you look at all across the world what people were doing. Yeah. I mean, so I think I and I think it. I think people are beginning to realize how biased and, and racist they can be. And I think I think they they're seeing we're gonna have to do something, or we're gonna have a torn up country. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to make some changes on some level, or we're going we're never going. And I think America. I think we still are probably the greatest nation. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of opportunity and economics. But we got some major issues. I mean, yeah. we got some issues other countries really don't have. I mean, you go to some third world countries and say, they're fighting for freedom. Yeah. You know, because they live under these tyrants. I mean, they kill their own people. Mm -hmm. And we have all these freedoms and we're just as, we live in just as much as oppression as these, these other <laughs> countries do. Right. Uh, we're supposed to be free. Right. And yet we that have is... more, to me, we have more issues than they do. They're just trying to get out from the, under these tyrants. Like, the guy from North Korea <laughs> and even China. Oh, yeah. I mean, China got their own little... You can't have... Who says you can't have more than one or two children? How, how does <laughs> the government have a right to say that? Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't... I, I, I wouldn't live there if I, was, if I was born there. I wouldn't live there. You, you, know, you can come over... You can have as many kids as you want as long as you can take care of them. Nope. Right. Restriction like that. You know, some countries, especially some of these uh, Middle Eastern countries, think about this now. You and you and I, we're married. We can hold our wives' hands. We, we, they don't walk behind us. They walk beside us. 
Mm-hmm. Some countries you go to, the women can't walk by their husband's side. They got to walk behind them. Right. That's crazy. See, we got all these little freedoms we take for granted in this country. We don't, we, you know, and yet people live under such, they really live under such oppressive situations that we don't deal with, and yet we, we, we take it for granted. Yeah, that's true. You know, that actually kind of brings me into um, a question that I did want to ask you. Um, you know, what what was the racial tension like for you growing up? Um, it was bad. It, 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 was, it was bad. And it wasn't necessarily white people. It was black people, too. Hmm. Because you had to deal with, 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 you know, people, you know, Here's why I'll I'll get in trouble. (laughs) uh, (laughs) See, we talk we we talk about we don't like people calling us niggas and stuff like that, but we do it to each other. Right. We call each other dog. I'm not a dog. Don't call me dog. I remember me and Gloria. Mark, you remember that Chinese food place on Santa Fe? Yeah. In Compton, me and Gloria Uh went up there one day get some food. And so this brother came out. He said, what's up, black man? <laughs> and I just looked at him. I mean, I just seriously looked at him. Because I don't answer to nothing like that. Mm-hmm. If you don't know my name, ask me my name. Don't throw these <laughs> phrases out there. The dog, what's up, chief? I don't like that stuff. If you don't know my name, ask me on it. Because I don't p- treat people like that. Mm. I don't call somebody dog. What's up, black man? What's up, chief? What's up, sir? I mean, how you doing, sir? If I don't know your name, I'm going to treat you with respect and dignity. And so I was. Lo- I just looked at him. And Glory had to tell me. She said, let it go, dad. She said, let it go, dad. <laughs> <laughs> she said, let it go, dad. And I had to realize what she, you know, I had to realize what, because I was like, you know, I don't, I don't believe in starting a fight or something like that. I, that's not me. I'm not gonna start a fight. But there's some things if I was gonna fight about, it would be things like that being called out of name, mm. even though it's culturally acceptable. I don't like that. But we do it to each other. So how can we get offended if a, uh, if a, a white man calls you nigga? Why are you offended? We do it to each other. We don't think nothing about. I I don't get it. I mean, yeah. if you're offended by one, you ought to be offended by all. You ought to ask everybody to treat you with respect. Yeah, I I think I think the thing is that people have to understand relationships. And what I mean by that is you don't have the same type of relationship with everybody. Like, the way that me and Jay can talk to each other, everybody can't talk to me that way. Because mm-hmm. yeah. they don't have that type of relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I remember seeing this. I don't know if you guys seen it, but there's this uh, black guy. Uh, um, he was doing some uh, interview or whatever it was. Uh, and it had, you know, an audience and all that stuff. So it was in the auditorium. So I'm not sure what it was that he was doing, and I don't know his name. But I know it went around on Facebook and stuff for, for a while. I think it still goes on. Um, but he uh, he had to answer the, a question uh, that was kind of similar to that, where it's like, you know, um, basically, why does it seem like, you know, it's okay for Black people to do it, but it's not okay for white people to do it and so he had to explain like hey you know his wife you know her and her girlfriends they call each other the b-word you know that's my b that's what blah, blah, blah. he said that that's her relationship with them he said i wouldn't dare call my wife or her, <laughs> you know the b and he has no right. no 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 desire for that but that's because that's their relationship with each other and he 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 applied that to the broader scale 
where, hey, mm-hmm. white people, y'all can have that relationship with us. That's right. for us. Right. If we so choose to, you know what I'm saying? Now, do I do I agree with you, Dad, on the subject matter of kind of using it publicly and letting kind of the world know how we talk to each other and our stuff? I do agree. I do feel like that's a factor into to how they kind of choose to, to uh, treat us in a way. Because at the end of the day, you have some people that will respect that and say, hey, that's not my relationship. But you got a lot of people. And this goes inside and outside of the of, of the Black community. Um, and this is in every community, I believe. You got a lot of people that they don't have that type of understanding. And so they think like, oh, because I see you doing it with, you know, so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Oh, that means I can do it too. No, you cannot. Like, <laughs> no, you cannot. Like, you don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I might, like, somebody like me, somebody like me, might not be the type of person to pop off and be impulsive and all that stuff and be ready to fight. But you got some people that are, and you got some people that will kill you over that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you got, you gotta, you gotta know who you're talking to before you talk to them. If you don't know that person, like my dad said, how are you, sir? You know what I'm saying? Like greet them with, with respect as if you never met them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't just go up to everybody and be like, Hey, what's going on, bro? Or what's up, dog? You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's just being real. Like, you can't be, you know what I'm saying, um, assumptuous, so to speak, or whatever, you know, like, you can't assume that it's okay to just talk to a person a certain type of way just because right. culturally speaking or at large, it seems to be acceptable by right. everybody when it's done. And I don't like when people I don't know say things like that. See, because I don't, I, I got to ignore them. Most of the time I just ignore them and keep on stepping. Cause I know if I say something, it's gonna probably turn into a fight, <laughs> which I ain't got time mm-hmm. for. You know what I mean? I got I got a family to live for. I ain't got time to be trying to knock your chip <laughs> off your shoulder. You think a certain yeah. way, you know? So, so that's why like, most oh. time when I hear, I just keep on stepping. I don't even I don't even respond to them. <laughs> I just yeah, keep it's, if you it's can't funny. if you can't approach me the right way, we ain't got no dealings with each other. Yeah, it's funny. I kind of do the same thing too. Like I, I don't really pay people too much attention when they say when they use certain things. And now me, I'm a little bit more gracious in some ways. Like if, if somebody just comes up to me and be like, "Hey, what's going on, bro?" I'm not tripping off of that. That's just me though. You know what I mean? Like, I'm bro not, is acceptable. You know? Bro is acceptable. Right. When you but start I mean, like, talking about what's up, my nigga? What's up, Keith? <laughs> what's, up? what's up, black right. man? Right. That 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 ain't that that. That ain't acceptable to me. Yeah, but I mean, like, some people, like, they're even, like, even with bro, like, you've got to have that relationship where, because some people take that to heart. Like, if I use the word bro, you know what I'm saying, that means you're my brother, you know what I'm saying? And some people don't have it in their mind that, oh, you guys are all my brothers and sisters, no matter what, you know what I mean? Like, not everybody has that mentality. Some people do, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I said, uh, you know, uh, I'm okay with, you know, somebody walks into me and kind of says, you know, hey, like, what's going on, bro? How you doing? You know, blah, blah, blah. That's or, acceptable because so. I, I can understand if it's another black man, he's saying, probably using that word because we're the same race. Right. So that's kind of acceptable. But when they start using these other, you know, <laughs> stuff, no, so, okay. I'm not going to so, respond to that. You so let's get so, can't approach me right. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> so let's get a little bit further into this fatherhood piece. So um, if you did have a message, what was your message, you know, to, to me and Josh and Gloria, um, you know, as far as, you know, uh, racial uh, racial tension was concerned? Like, did you did you have a message? If so, you know, what was that that you, you want us to kind of grow up knowing or learning? Uh, there's only one race, and that's the human race. Now, God in his wisdom created us of all different shades of color, all different, you know, we come from everywhere. You know, you got all these different languages. There's only one race. Everybody bleeds red. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. Everybody bleeds yellow, bleeds green, bleeds blue. If you did, right. then I can see why you think you might be in fit, you know, superior to somebody. Everybody bleeds red. So, you know, everybody has the same, uh, 
everybody has a brain. You got eyes, you got ears. You, you know, most people in general, all things considered, all things being equal, you got arms and legs. How are you better than anybody else? We got the same functions. Some people use it to a greater capacity than others, but that's okay. We're not meant to be the same. We're not meant to go to the same degrees. Mm -hmm. So how is anybody superior to you? I don't, I don't see how anybody can say we're better than you in your, in your, in your thinking. We're, there's only one human race. So how people decide or think they're better because of social status, because of your nationality, because of your money, you know, that's just pride. Mm -hmm. That's no, really I agree just with that. pride. You, nobody's better than anybody else. You know? So, and, and I think knowing that, then we need to treat everybody equally. Right. I don't care what you do. You, you know, I, I, I know there's this big thing about the gay and lesbian community. I wouldn't even call them what they call themselves. I would treat them with respect and dignity. I would treat you as a person. Mm. You know, they say we're queer. I wouldn't call you a queer. If I, even if I knew you were that, I wouldn't call you that. I would want to know your name. If I didn't know your name, I would call I would say sir or ma'am or whatever until I could figure, until I knew your name. I would still treat you with respect and dignity. I think that's what God wants for us to do. Treat every human being because they're created in his image. I don't care whether, whether you agree with their lifestyle or not. And I think that's where the church has made a big mistake. We stood in pulpits called them faggots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know, I've heard it. And I think yeah. that's wrong. You know what I mean? That's just no, I agree with you. where God wants us to have them. God wants us to view them and see them. Mm -hmm. They're still made in his image and likeness, and we need to treat them that way. I don't care whether we agree with their lifestyle or not. I've seen pastors get up in the pulpit and make mockery of them. Yeah, yeah, you know. And do, come on. That's not what we're called to do. Let's so, treat everybody. Uh, with respect and dignity. And that's how we'll win people. Right. I agree. So we're gonna switch it up a little bit. Um and then Dre, you could uh you can hit the next few questions. But uh what was what was something um and if it was more than one thing that's fine, you know what I mean? But and you know what were things that you wanted to teach you know your kids about God? Uh, first of all, that uh, that he exists. I know there's uh, there's what's being taught in schools that you know uh, about evolution and you know we evolved, and, but it got so many holes in it. And just logically, when I look at it, like got so many holes in it. Uh, I won't go into that, but that, that there is a God. Mm -hmm. And because we're his creation, we are accountable to him. And the, the thing I like about God is, you know, it's an individual choice. I'm glad, I'm glad I don't have to answer to God. I only have to answer to God for Ray. I don't have to, my parents don't answer to God for me. You know, they have to answer to God for themselves. I'm, and I'm glad he made it that way. But it's an individual thing. So we have to decide individually what we're going to do with God, who he is, and whether we're going to serve him or not. And that's what I want my, I wanted my kids. You got to make that decision for yourself. I can't make it for you. Right. And I am so glad that they have it. We ne the thing I like about our kids we have never had to force them into that decision. That's a decision they made on their own at, at whatever age they made it. They made it on their own. We just, we just told them about God, and, and we tried to bring them up in that atmosphere in church and in home, but it was a decision they had to make for themselves. And, you know, 
Cause there are times like we were saying, we, we not going to church today <laughs> or, you know, we, for whatever the reason. And they would find somebody to go with. They would call them, <laughs> somebody and say, hey, you go to church. And I, I'm, I'm so glad for that, that mindset out of them. Cause like I say, we, we never tried to force God on them. Yeah, but we did believe in doing the things that God said, bring your children up in the fear of the Lord. Mm-hmm. But we never tried to, okay, you're going to serve God no matter what. We're going to drag you to church. No, no, I don't think that's, because I was dragged to church. And then oh, yeah. so when I got of age, I rebelled, <laughs> I rebelled against going. And I, 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 I kind of found a way to stay home with dad. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a mistake too that was a mistake but that was like that was not the best my mother went but at that age I mean and at a young age I think you should make your children go to church and have them in church and I, I didn't, I stopped going at an early age. I was probably under 10 when I stopped going. And I, to me, that's, that's, it's that parent's responsibility to keep their children in church. And when they get up, when they're old enough, mature enough to make a decision for themselves, then I think you leave it to them. But I think mm-hmm. we need to keep our children, if we're going to church, we need to, the Bible says, train your child in the way they should go. Mm-hmm. And to me, parents are the train, and the kids are the cars. <laughs> the train goes, the cars go. So if you train your children to go, they'll follow. I like that analogy. I agree with Until that. Until they become a train themselves, where they can make that decision for themselves. But that's why it says to train them. Train them to be a train. The train goes, the cars go. Cars that are attached to it go, and all and and until our children reach a certain age where they're responsible enough to make that decision themselves, we should treat them like their cars. The cars attached to the train, they're going because I'm going, and I think that's the best way to set that example. Not seeing your children to church, take them to church. A lot of people send their children to church, but by your actions, you're saying church isn't important to you. But I want you to go. That's that's mm. counterproductive. You take them to church. You set the example of how important church is. You take them to church. Yeah. Otherwise, you're counterproductive. I agree with that. And so I'm glad that they had they at an early kind of you know I guess when they were in their early, early teens they made that decision for themselves. And like I said, we didn't have to force it on them or anything. And so I'm grateful right. for where they are. I'm grateful for where they are now. We've never had any problems out of our children. You know, I never had to go to jail and, and take get any of my children out of jail. And I thank God for my 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 parents. You know, and, and I, I look at the unrest that's going on. You know, parents really work hard to keep their children out of jail. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, good parents do. You don't want your children going to jail, that's a heartbreak on you. And to see all these people being arrested, I mean, come on, you, you, do the curb, I mean, do the protests, but when curfew time, go home. Yeah. Why would you want to stand there and be arrested and go through that process? I don't get that. Go home. You protested. You were out there long enough. Go home. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. I mean, just some... Now, I think the people that looted and vandalized, I think if they can find out who they I think they ought to be charged. I, I'm, I'm practical. I'm practical. They ought mm-hmm. to be charged. But the people that broke the curfew, I, they let them go. I mean, I don't even know why they even arrested them. Yeah, I agree with just, that. Just clear, just clear them out. Make them move. I mean, you could do that. You got the authority to do that. But to waste, I mean, because you're wasting taxpayer money. Arresting them, you know, keeping them over. I mean, come on, that's a that that was a joke. 
So I have a question for you. Um, I, I, I think this is going to, you know, raise our curiosity a little bit more. Um, how did you deal with the news when you found out that your wife was pregnant? Um, <laughs> actually, actually, with Mark and Joshua, I knew she was pregnant before she told me. Oh. Mm. <laughs> before I even got the news, I, I knew. I don't know. How, how did you I know? Knew. I don't know. I, don't, I can't tell you how I knew, but I knew. <laughs> with Gloria, I had no idea she was pregnant. And she was dropping me hits. We were, sit, we were sitting in the bedroom with her. She, she was dropping me hits that she couldn't, that she was pregnant. I, 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 I didn't. <laughs> Wait, wait, so she knew that she was pregnant with Gloria before you knew? Yeah. <laughs> and she was, she was, we were in the bedroom day and she was dropping me hints that she was pregnant and I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because I, I knew, uh, and I forgot to mention that part uh, when we talked about all, uh, when we got to it on, on, our, on, the, on our episode, but I knew uh, my wife was pregnant all three times. Like my wife, <laughs> I ain't gonna put her on blast, but my, but I knew, like, I kept telling her, like, babe, you're pregnant. The first time when we had uh, the, the first pregnancy, told her she was pregnant. Her coworkers were telling her she pregnant. She didn't believe it. Second pregnancy with Lennox, told her she was pregnant. She didn't believe it. Um, then the third one, I was like, you pregnant? She, didn't, you know, it just, it just it happens. <laughs> you do every know. time. <laughs> yeah, men know. Like, men, sometimes men literally know before women do. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I tease them sometimes. I said. I, I, and I tease her at times. I said, you know, it, I didn't know she you were with her, and I'm, I'm that's why I'm still trying to figure both of y'all out. <laughs> I, got I, I can't figure both of y'all out. You you are my daughter. I'm still trying to figure both of y'all out. <laughs> you know, it's so funny as you were naming your. I just realized you guys have the same exact path of kids. It, not the same as that years apart, but right? Two boys right. and a girl. Yep. <laughs> that's crazy. And yeah. I said and I said I said that that's how it's gonna be. If Lennox was a boy, which he was, then the, then when we have a third child it's gonna be a girl. I, I said because cause uh her on her family, on her side of the family, it's four girls, then there then there's a boy. So the boy is the baby. You mm. know what I mean? So it's, it's so you know, my wife, she's the oldest. <laughs> so I was like, hey, like, you know, it's it's gonna and I wanted I wanted a girl second, but that's not how it happens. And I said, Hey, if this one's a boy, then the next one's gonna be a girl. I'm just just letting you know how it's gonna be. So, you know, it turned out exactly I said, you know, I don't know I never asked her how she felt about that, but you know well no, she like she likes it because um my boys are close in age together so they can play together and be friends and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So mm -hmm. she likes it that way. Um yeah. So, so Mr. Oh, Robinson, did you feel prepared? <laughs> There's no manual on parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> I did no. accept the Bible. <laughs> the probably the closest you're gonna get. And it's 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 a it's a uh, it's a learning experience and a growing experience. And, and one of the things I hated when, uh, you know, that my wife's family used to do is that uh, they used to try and tell you how to raise your children, oh, some gosh. of those, those siblings. You know, yeah. they see you make a mistake yeah. and it was like, or they, you did something they didn't think was the best thing. Or, or, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like thinking, hey, nobody's born a good parent. Right. You learn. You learn. It's a learning thing, and I just yeah. used to hate when they and they criticize each other. I just hate hearing that. Look, that's their child. That's their child. That's not your child. They're doing what they think is in the best interest of their child. You know. Mm -hmm. I, you know. Sometimes we look at other people. We say, "Well, I wouldn't do that." You know. We we look at what other people are doing, but it's not your child. See, and yeah. you, only you know the lynch you'll go to with with your child. Nobody can tell you what lens. They say you can only go so far with your, you, that's not your child. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've gone through lens with each of my children that maybe somebody on the outside would say, well, you shouldn't, you know. 
It's not your child. <laughs> it's not your child. It's my child. So I'm going to go through whatever lens I think I need to go through with them. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> oh. It's, I agree with that. It's, it's just a learning that, that, experience. I mean, they write books on it. They're helpful at times. You can learn mm -hmm. something from them. But there's no manual on children. No, so, I agree with that. Question with that, or to kind of piggyback off of that in a way, how how did you uh you know how did you feel and how did you deal with the news that you were going to become a grandfather? Yeah, because you're in grandfatherhood too. Yeah, like yeah. you you're the only grandfather we got on uh, for the series. <laughs> uh, I I I love it. I love being a grandfather. Uh, here's one of the reasons why. Uh, when all, pretty much all my siblings had children at early ages. Like, they were in their teens. All, all, especially all my Really? Sisters. Yeah, they were in their teens. But I saw how my father, and I guess, you, you know, nobody, no father, no, no parent really wants to see their child have a, a, a kid at like 16, 15 years old. You don't, you don't want that for your child, mm -hmm. you know? But I saw how my dad would, even when the, the the father of the child didn't step up, I saw how my dad stepped up to make sure when my sisters had kids, he took he provided for them. Even when that that father didn't, he would make mm -hmm. sure my children, uh, my sister and them had the the diapers and the formulas and all that, you know, and make sure that they, those kids were taken care of. So that became important. That just that, watching that growing up became important to me. And so when uh, my son had the first grandchild, it did something in my my whole paradigm of, about life shifted. Really? <laughs> um, and there were things that I thought were so important at the time before I became a grandparent. I realized those things aren't that important. <laughs> because some stuff, interesting. Like, like some stuff like what? Uh, just about life, you know. Uh, just about life, about uh, work, money, things that we think are so important. When I had, uh, when Mark was born, it just changed my shift. I mean, they're still important. But they weren't, they didn't, they weren't as important as I was making them. Yeah. At the time. Now, me, I'm still living for God. I'm still living for my family. But I'm also living for my grandchildren now. We and just kind of had a father on here kind of talk about that a little bit, too. How, you know, we sometimes men make work more important than the family. And it's really right. Hard. And so I'm, I'm kind of living for them. Not, in fact, I, I I gave up a job I was holding at the church just so I could have time for them. Wow. Yeah. Because it was hitting yeah. on my Saturdays. I was up at my church every Saturday cleaning up, cleaning up on Sundays. And I said, I got to have time for my grandkids now. Mm -hmm. Another reason it's, it's important to me is because my father passed. My father saw all of his children have at least one child except me and my youngest brother. That's because we didn't have kids at an early age. Yeah. And so not him being able to see Mark in the, it, 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 there's that, I don't know, I don't even know the word to use. But I told God, there's a lot of things that are I'm not I'm not concerned about being rich. I want to I want to be well off. Don't get me wrong, but I ain't interested in being rich. I want to see all my kids grow up and have at least one child, and I have a measure of time with that child. And to me, that would complete life. Wow, that that Dang. would be the topping on life. I mean, because God has been so good. I mean, you know. My life is is full right now. 
I mean, I don't, I don't, I may not have all the material stuff. I may not have, be as wealthy as some people, but those things don't necessarily bring fulfillment either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So just, I want to, I, I still got, let me live to see all my kids have at least one child. Let me live that long and I can have some measure of time with them and life will be complete for me. That's all I want to that's, that's what that's I want dope. to live to see. Of course, I want to live to do what God has called me to do, but I want to live to see <laughs> right. that. I want to live to see that. And hey, that'll make life really fulfilling for me. I mean, every time I when I, when when I see my grandkids, it's like, you know, they just they just you know, they talk about we're like kids. They bring me to life. Just just seeing them, even if he FaceTimes us, just when I see them, it's like it does something to me. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a there's a joy they just even seeing them that brings to me that nothing else can top. So and, and you know, and 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 we're talking about father fatherhood is important. And I, I wish more fathers, you know, I, 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 I know some people, there's a, a, a young lady on my job, very, she's just a, a beautiful person inside and out. She mm -hmm. talks about her mom. I never really say anything about her dad. And I'm wondering, is he in her life? Is he, and I'm thinking, so many fathers miss out because they're not in their children's life. Right. And that's, that's something you can never recover. If you're not part of your child's life, you can never recover that. And so many children sub-grow up because they're not, they don't have their parents in their life. I, I think part of our cultural problems are because of the lack of two-parent homes. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, if God designed children to come up under a, a, a mother and a father, if that was the framework and foundation, it's no wonder our society is crumbling. You know, they talk about, the like, hey, look, femininity has to be taught but it has to be modeled. No man can model femininity to a to a, a daughter. Right. Masculinity right. has to be taught, but it has to be modeled. No woman can ma uh, can model masculinity to her son. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody says. You can't do it. A woman right, cannot be a man to her son. She can only be a mother. Mm -hmm. uh, a father cannot be a mother to his daughter. He can only be a father. Right. And we need that both of those. We really right. need both of those to build a healthy society. And when one is missing, it affects. It affects. I don't care what the psychologist is saying and all that. There's there's something missing in that child's lives when they don't have both parents actively involved in their lives. Yeah. And, I the, I agree. and the, statistics, the statistics show it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet we think we're going to raise a healthy society. Otherwise, we're not. Yeah. We're not. I, I remember um, a, a, a few years ago, um, I want to say my wife was pregnant with, with Lennox. And um, she was at her, uh, her uh, family's house. And um, um, they spent the night. I was working, um, so I couldn't go with them or anything like that. So, but they spent the night. Uh, I think it was like a couple of days, and it was like after. I think if I'm not mistaken, it was like after the first day or something like that. Uh, while they were there, Mark was kind of you know acting like you know my wife basically she was telling me like I think he misses you. You know what I'm saying? So when I got down there to pick them up, it was kind of it kind of came a difference for him where he wasn't necessarily behaving the same way anymore. 
and mm-hmm. it just kind of showed in his, you know what I'm saying, his behavior, like, you know, my dad, you know, I'm used, and, and so, you know, that just kind of showed me, like, yo, like, whatever issues that, you know what I'm saying, y'all may encounter and, and have, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, you just got to work, you got to work through that, because if for no other reason, like, your kids need that, that model and that balance, you know what I'm saying, like, like, I, and I, and I've even said, you know, like, I, I don't think it was anything serious, but just saying, like, you know, like, I'll tell my daughter, she clearly can't understand everything I'm saying, but, you know, I'll tell, like, oh, I'm not mommy, you know what I'm saying, like, only mommy can give you this or whatever, blah, 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 right. and, uh, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, it's like, the, like, the truth of the matter is, like, you know, I can't display what it's like to be a woman, you know what I'm saying, I'm not designed that way, and my wife right. can't, you know, display what it's like to be a man, she's not right. designed that way. You know what I'm saying? And and that's something that when we learn as a whole, as a community, as a social status and all that stuff, that, you know, it's not good to just go around having sex with anybody and everybody and, and you know, just getting women pregnant and pregnant and, you know, and all this other stuff and just, you know, um, going around and just having multiple babies by multiple women and all this stuff. Like, that's not, that's not healthy. That's part of that is part of the reason why, and whether people want to agree with me or not, I don't care what you say. That is part of the reason why it's so much chaos in the world right now. Because yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like fathers are not being in the home, partially right. because they got children all over the place. You know what I'm saying? How can you be in, in one how can you be in the home with multiple children when they're dispersed, you know, in various places? You can't. Yeah, and I I think it's even true for the opposite sex. Like, for example, like my son. I can only be a father to my son, but I can't give him that nurturing aspect that my wife Absolutely. gives him. You know right, what I mean? Like right. sometimes I'm too hard on him, and sometimes right. my wife <laughs> gives it back. You know what I mean? Like I can't yeah, do for it. Real. And then with my daughter, I'm almost too lenient because I'm like, that's my girl. You know what I'm saying like I can't, I can't do that hard. <laughs> right. So right. she has to bring in the right. extra discipline on that end. So we need right. both. Exactly. We need both, man. Exactly. So. um, you know, because there, there are times your mom tell me, especially with Gloria, <laughs> you shouldn't talk to her like that. Sometimes the tone of voice I would talk to her uh, uh-huh. or something, or maybe the words I use, you shouldn't talk to her like that. Okay. <laughs> and, and then, when I try, and then, and then she would tell me, well, you shouldn't let her get away with that. <laughs> wait a minute, now, wait a minute. You're, you're telling me I'm too hard. Now you're telling me I'm, wait a minute, come on. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> if I'm being too hard in the moment, then, you know, go go ahead behind me and give them that trick. Right. If I'm being too lenient, you know what I'm saying, then you come in and you give them the, you know, the opposite. And that way yeah. it still works out. <laughs> right. So, so, so that, it's like, it's like, oh, man. You know, and I'm I'm like you. Daughters are are daughters are. You know, they just have your heart. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Cause mine, heart. mine. I you tell, I, and my wife, she, you know, she be talking mess low key or whatever, and she be talking about so. You know, you just spoiling her. You know, just, listen. That is my ba- like. You don't understand, okay? First of all, you got two boys. You know what I mean? That at the end of the day, regardless of how you want to see it. You know, they, they, they say that I'm my oldest son's best friend. And, you know, and it, it's cool, whatever. But listen, when they get older or whatever it is, they they going to be mama's boys, both of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially Lennox. Lennox especially. But they're going to both be mama boys. You know what I'm saying? And and it is what it is. I'm not tripping and saying, you know, you going to, you know, spoil them. Let them know. Because at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I need to make it, I say it like this, and I feel like all men should do this. And I kind of, it's funny because I, I learned this uh, or I realized this when we went out for, I think it was Lennox's birthday earlier this year. We were at, um, can't, I, I forgot the theme park that we were at, but it's uh, not far from not, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And so there was this guy there with his daughter, I think it was her birthday or something like that. And mm-hmm. so, um, uh, Dad, I think you was right there with me. And the guy said, you know, he just basically he tells her yes pretty much all the time. And the reason why, though, is because he doesn't want, uh, you know, some guy coming along. Oh, yeah, I remember you know that. I remember saying? It, yeah. And just kind of like he kind of got easy access because, you know, like basically her dad wasn't effective in his life. Now, I'm not saying yeah. we should be yes men, but right. 
you know what I'm saying, in, in the overall aspect and view of it, like, I got to make it difficult for some man to come along and propose and become her husband. Like, he, got to, he, got, he has to do at the very minimum what I'm doing. To right. even, you know what I'm you, saying? Like, at the you got to raise her standards. Better. Right. Like, right. like, for me, even, I would say he needs to do better than what I did. You know what I'm saying? Like, she might, in her eyes in the future, I don't know, she might see, like, oh, daddy is the greatest man of all time. Listen, if, if you see me as that, then he needs to be better than that. And whatever better than that looks like, then it needs to be that. Like, he needs to be able to, <laughs> like, seriously, because, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like, I make my, my you know, my, my, my falls and, and all that stuff as a father. And I'll definitely make many more in the future, uh, especially right. when she get older. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, want, I want it to be so difficult that, you know, the path is narrow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like the reason mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. some of the marriages that are today, not that we're talking about marriages, but just some of the things, some of the relationships between men and women that we see today is because the road isn't narrow enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to, I feel like you got to be narrow-minded to the type of men and the type of women that, you know, are, are allowed in. And so, you know, I want my daughter, like, yo, like, be so narrow-minded, not in the sense of, of uh, um, like, no man is good enough for you, but that, it, like, it got to be right. Like, he got to be right. Mm -hmm. Ain't no, ain't no mm -hmm. room for, you know, he, yeah, he ain't going to be perfect, but he, he got to be right. right. If he ain't right, exactly. he got to go, period. I'm not playing. I'm that. with you on that. Um, so, but Dad, let me let's ask this. Well, um, I, well, I want to hear. I want to hear Dre say how he's grooming his daughter for, for not only adulthood but <laughs> for potential marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I so my daughter, she's she's only four right now. So I like in my mind, um, I the only fear that I have about her dating and stuff like that is if she runs into a younger me. Like, I, that that scares me. I don't want to meet, I don't want to meet me as a young man. <laughs> and, and have to deal with that. Um, but the main thing, I, and it's, it's really with both my kids, but especially with my daughter, it's just value. You know what I mean? Like, I want her to know, like, mm. you are so valuable. You have such yeah. a high standard that a man mm -hmm. has to, you know, you know, I, I always think about the the aspect in the Bible is like, okay, you know, of the the man is supposed to be willing to sacrifice his life for his wife, the same way that Christ is willing to sacrifice for the church. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he need to be willing to die for you before he can touch you. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. And I might have to prove it. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel, you know. <laughs> yeah, me me and Dre, we dad, me and Dre, we got we got this thing. Uh I don't know if you ever seen Bad Boys, but uh uh the uh, the movie with Will Smith and um and Martin Lawrence. But mm -hmm. in the movie, Martin Lawrence, it, he has his whole family. You know, he, he's a cop. They're both cops. Right. And um, uh, that's how they became best friends and brothers and everything. And so, Will, he's the godfather to, to his children, to uh, Martin Lawrence's character's children. And so uh, in, the, in, the, in the movie, his daughter, um, she uh, has this young man that's coming over to take her on a date. And they pull out this, this thing where uh, – Will's character acts kind of as if he like just came out the pen or whatever, and they both going hard <laughs> on him like, "Who is you?" And you know they kind of cussing him out and everything, but it's like you're 18, you look 30, and uh, you know it just kind of. So me and Dre we said, "Hey, we're gonna, you know, we agree, you know, we gonna we gonna kind of pull that out, you know, for our daughters and, and whatnot." And then we got extra brothers too, like uh, like Ronnie uh, and and Mike Smith, mm -hmm. and you know we, we said. We, Probably gonna be going to go look for some uh, shotguns and and other stuff too, cause ain't, ain't nobody playing them games. Like and like Dre said, he gonna have to kind of prove that you know with us that you know, hey, I'm I'm worthy. I'm willing to die if it be yeah. a man with daughter. You know what I'm saying? That's like, and if if you're willing to give up your life, that then we can really talk. You know, we can really talk. But before that, I, yeah, so, so. but now let me let's. <laughs> so we winding down. Um, for the last few minutes of the episode, but what is some um, advice that you would uh, give 
uh, fathers that, you know, maybe young fathers like me and Dre or, you know, guys that want to be fathers and to grandfathers because, you know, you're a grandfather. So you got some some good experience. You got about three years, four years almost into grandfatherhood. And, uh, you know, uh, what, what's some advice that you would give to fathers? Uh, all your children, all your children are adults. Let me say it like that. You ain't a, you ain't a full empty nester yet, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I love my brother. But um, but you 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 uh you you all all three of your children. We are all adults. Um, I dang Gloria is what twenty three now. Sheesh. 20, yeah, she's yeah, she she's she, she, be twenty four this year, man. Twenty four this year. So you know your youngest is twenty three. <laughs> Uh, you know, so what advice you got some for fathers and, and what's some advice for grandfathers? Well, I, I, I think it's a it's a blessing to be a father. Uh, and, and I think what's more important is that fathers be there for their children, for that wife, for their children. I, I'll never forget, uh, I was going to make a career change. Uh, back in the early 90s, I was just thinking, that I'm, I'm, I'm I served in the military, so, uh, uh, and I, I want to make a career change. I didn't want to go, I wasn't thinking about going back to the military, but I was going to, I went and applied uh, with the police department. Really? Uh, <laughs> your mom dropped me off. I went yeah. to the test and all that. Uh, I, I had it in my mind, I was going to start off in law enforcement, become a detective, because in the military, I had a top secret top secret clearance, which is still valid. And so I was going to kind of work my way up to CIA or something like that. You know, anybody knows me, I, 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 I like movies dealing with things like that. Yeah. Like, like I like SWAT. I like SEAL team that comes on. I like criminal minds. <laughs> I like, <laughs> Yay. I, I like movies around that thing. And uh, I'll never forget uh, when she came and picked me up, uh, that took the test, passed the test. They they wanted me to uh, make an appointment to uh, do the psyche valve, and uh, and then you had to do the physical uh, test. And I never forget when she picked me up. Uh, she had this look on her face. I never. These words are still in my mind, and that look on. 20, almost 24 years later, <laughs> she said, she looked at me and she said, you wanted this baby? You better make sure you're around to take care of her. <laughs> 20, almost 24 years later, I still remember that look. Now, let me ask, let me ask. words. Was that, did it almost feel was like saying, it was a threat? No, no, no. What she was saying was, <laughs> what she was saying was and I thought about it, it took me a while to, to realize what she was we need you. Right. I need yeah. you. Your children need you. And we can't have you in some wondering the line of work you do, whether you're gonna make it home the next day or not. You can't have us living like that. I need you. Your children need you. And so that is true today. Our children need us as fathers. Mm -hmm. It's important that we be involved in our lives. It's important that we be active in our lives. As much as we can, they need us in a way we probably don't even imagine. And I think it's tragic for some fathers because they don't realize how much their children need them. Right. They're, yeah. they're doing their thing and they don't realize what how that's impacting their children's life and most of the time not for good the very you know when i grew up I, i'm so glad i had my father and mother till they both died and there was a cartoon before you guys talk but it was called wait till your father gets on old cartoon we used to look at <laughs> I mean, check that <laughs> out the children would get in trouble the mom would say Wait till your father gets old. <laughs> and I'm so glad I grew up in that where the presence of a father. I, I think I would have done some some crazy stuff 
if my father was not involved in our lives, if I had, didn't have a father to come home to, mm. I don't think my mother would have been able to handle me. I think I would have just did some crazy stuff in life. But because I think that's why the I did the presence crazy stuff. of my father, <laughs> I knew that if I did certain things, I had to answer to him when he got home from work. Mm. And I just, there were just some consequences I did never want to face. So that the presence of that father kept my life in check. Mm-hmm. Like I say, I it was twelve of us, six boys, six girls. All of the <laughs> brothers had been yeah. to jail. Well, bro. I think except me and my youngest brother. I never wanted to have my parents ever come bail me out of jail. Never. And like I said, they worked hard to keep us out of jail. Some of them went. I never wanted to put that burden on my parents. That's a burden. That's a heartache to a parent. I never wanted mm-hmm. to do that to them. But the presence of my father, because my father was there, kept me from doing a lot of things. I know if I was just, if it was just my mother raising us, I'd have did some off the wall stuff. I think I'd be in jail today. Because she, would, she wouldn't have known how to handle me. And, and, and that father, feels that vacuum. So many kids are in trouble today because they don't have that father feeling that vacuum, that space in their life. And they got this emptiness in them and they're acting out in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important that fathers be involved in their children's life constantly. Active. Not just at home and when you get home you don't do nothing with your children. You got to be active in their life. You got to be involved. I don't care if you're sitting in the floor playing games with them or, or read the book to them or some, something like that. You know, Gloria used to have me tell her stories every night. <laughs> like, I was the greatest storyteller in the world. <laughs> tell me a story before I go to bed. Oh, yeah, I do remember I, her saying that now. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> And you gotta think of something. You gotta think, break one. Yeah, think of something. Uh, or, or, or what do you want to hear a story about? <laughs> it was important. I didn't realize it was important to her. That right. time was important to her. Man, that's you know? interesting. But that yeah, was I think a, that's a great that way was to me end and her episode. thing. She, she, when I could be there before, she wanted a story to fall asleep on. Man. That hey, I got to get in another meeting with my job. I got so many oh, okay. stuff. I usually, they do a nine o'clock team meeting on Tuesday. I usually don't participate. Oh, but uh, you got to participate this one. Yeah, this one, there's, there's some things going on. And I, I got some things I need to say and, and see where we're going. Okay. Uh, well, all right, Mr. Robinson. I ain't but doing my I time with you. congratulate both of you and just say how proud I am of both of you. You're there, involved with your families. You're doing, you're doing what you should do. You're doing what every father should do. Thank you, sir. young men, you Thank could be you. doing a lot of other stuff. Balling with your friends, not taking, making time for your families. But I'm, when I see the example of you guys, I am proud of you. And I'm proud to be a father. Because you are carrying on what a real man should be doing. And your children, like I told Mark, your children, when they get older and they see so many of their friends were raised, didn't have a father, man, your children will be so, when they realize how they grew up with a father and so many of their friends didn't, one day when they get old enough to see it, they're going to realize how blessed they were. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. you. Definitely appreciate that. And the impact, the positive impact you guys have left on their lives. Right. So keep up the good work you both are doing. Yeah. I love you. I'm proud of you as men, black men. Because they say we don't take care of our, you know, the, 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 yeah, and then, you know, you look at the culture. The culture is telling, basically saying, kids don't, we don't need fathers. I disagree with that. In fact, I got I got a book on my mind if I ever get around to writing it, but it's called the title will be Fathers, Why We Need Them. 
Uh oh, mm. we might have to. We might have to, have to. We might have to Man. get that started. Yeah, we might have to get, get that out. Attributed well, yeah. by Father, <laughs> the greatest man. Right. Right. Are you listening to this? Where are you, Aurelia? <laughs> when publications? Are y'all listening to this? We got a Father book coming out. <laughs> I, I want to write that book. I really want to write that book before I leave here. We're gonna make we're sure gonna, you we're do gonna it. help. We're gonna make sure you do that. So I really want to write that book. Have Father, because I now I want to read that. I need I need help. I need help. So you know I, I'm I'm gonna read that. So we're gonna get you. We, me and Dre, we're gonna work together to help you get that together. We're gonna and, make uh, sure we, that we already out. got we already got the connect on on getting that published and everything. So we good. We good. <laughs> All right, Dad. Thank All you right, for Mr. being Robinson. part of the episode. Thank I you so much. I love you too, man. And I'm glad you came through. Yeah. I love right, you, let me just close with prayer, if you guys don't mind. Let me just do a quick prayer. Oh, oh yeah, no oh, problem. I, I, I thank you for these men that are fathers that are out there doing what you have called them to do in relationship to their family. They're providing, they're protecting, but more importantly, they're bringing them up in the fear and nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bless these men, bless their wives, bless their families, their children protect, preserve, and keep them in all their ways. Meet every need. Bless every man that's a father. Put it in his heart to do for his children as you have designed and laid the foundation for us to do. Our, suf our world is suffering really from lack of fatherhood. We talk about all these other social issues, but it's really from lack of fatherhood. Our children are suffering. Bless every man that's doing what's right. Bless these men, God. Bless your people now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dad. So Perfect much. way really to go really out. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right.